Nag-meeting kami ni Spam. Oh, bro. Yeah. Ah, hindi ko na magagamit yung audio nito.
Yung ano talo yung JDG. Yes, 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 Coffee! Coffee! 
This is my puesto. <laughs>
Hi friends, it's me again, Gravy. If you have been here before, welcome back. If you haven't, welcome. My name is Gravy and I make videos about my mental health journey. So it's been a long time since I sat here and made a video because I've been very busy at work. I just got back to working after a month of focusing on healing and yeah so today we're just going to talk about 15 things that make sense now that i stopped ignoring my autism diagnosis according to my friends and family so doing the intentional work now of healing and being open about it to my loved ones i collected a list of their observations of me that are linked to my autism. I have a script. Um, I can't do this without a script because it's going to be a long, babbly video if I do that. And this is already going to be a long vlog because of a collection and montage of my weeks. Weeks? Days? I don't know. We will see during the editing process. <laughs> so yeah, let's just get right into it then. So first is reading about owls from our encyclopedia set when we were younger and related very much to their representation. So naturally, I told everyone I was an owl. I signed everything with owls. I've collected owls as, as much as I could and all because I related to them being seen as bad ermines. But you know what? They're just severely misunderstood. Oh. Mm. Can I talk? Okay. They're just severely misunderstood creatures. And in addition to that now are elephants and dogs. Elephants are because of my dad. He was obsessed with it when we were younger. He said that they always look very happy. And as for the dogs, they make me very happy and very soothed. So that's that. Second is that I love stationery too much. They provide so much joy in the senses from crafting to how it's used. It's very soothing to touch leather, paper, configure fountain pens, and more. So I'm just gonna show you. Hold on. So this is an example of it. This is my baby. This is my baby Dobby. Um, it's a Murderm Pocket Lux. And Sometimes I just smell it and flip through it and touch it. You know, it's, uh, yeah. So my doctor said that it's a way of stimming. So, but it can be a very addictive way to stim or to <laughs> help manage my emotions and block out overwhelming sensations. So, so that's basically stimming. So when you hear about autistic people, rocking their heads like or doing something with their fingers always pressing on something that is a coping mechanism when you're overwhelmed okay so third is this is gonna be a deep one it is being accused of being manipulative when i'm masking or um I've explained masking in my previous video, but I'm not going to explain it again, just search it. <laughs> or maybe I'll just put it here. Um, when masking because of difficulties with thinking about my actions and how it affects others. And most people who don't understand me and my diagnosis don't believe this because the accusation usually goes against my intelligence, according to them. Um, they're always saying that, hey, you're too intelligent to not know 
how I'm feeling or to not be aware of what you did. And then I tried to be extremely responsible of my own actions and have become more careful over the years. But I still get accused of being too kind and too nice to get my way. You know, I cannot win. And yeah, in the it's just because in the neurotypical world, it's I guess it's seen that way. So, so number four is um, people pleasing response or fawning, as I've mentioned as well in my previous video, when sensing danger, to feel safe instead of confronting a stressful situation like a normal or neurotypical person would. When I say no, sometimes people hear is maybe. So when I don't talk because I actually don't know how to respond, some people force their ideals on me. So if you ever get in a situation where I'm squirming or squirmingly saying no or just not talking maybe just take the hint <laughs> um fifth is being accused of not hearing others when they're angry because i actually couldn't process those properly i actually couldn't hear you when you're getting angry because i have difficulties with that it's yeah Number six is withdrawing when I can't empathize, like just leaving physically or just not hearing anything anymore. Trust me, it's better that way. And seventh is being over empathetic or hyper empathetic. Um, for autistic people, you will usually hear the stereotype that they cannot empathize. We can. Some as well or majority of the people are hyper empathetic like me sometimes i can feel it in my bones just not cool number eight is not being understood when i'm raising my voice to voice out my feelings because i am very overwhelmed um if my dad my sister or christopher are watching they all know that one of them needs to be a translator when this happens. Ninth, banging my head as a kid when I was crying or having a meltdown. So I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. It wasn't intentional. It's just that it helps me soothe um, whatever it is that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So number 10 is crying like an elephant as a kid because I couldn't express my needs like hunger, needing to pee, needing to poop, and the basic things that caused physical problems because of me stopping it. So I became constipated because of it. I was a very thin kid because I couldn't express my needs so much. Um, number 11 is being blunt or quote-unquote controversial because of my opinions so i actually don't know how to explain it that's just according to them number 12 is laughing at almost everything <laughs> people think i'm just a good cheerleader or the complete opposite like me being insensitive or making fun of people Ugh. I just sometimes think people and things are funny, dogs are very funny or awkward, and then I laugh. I just really like laughing on that note, saying things that at the most inappropriate time. So that's 11th. Saying things at the most inappropriate timing or just being inappropriate at all. Sorry, at times during conversations. Number 12 is being obsessed with learning to be properly funny. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like you can learn it i i don't know i think i can and not just being a meme i was tagged as a meme when i was younger until until now because i have very funny expressions according to them and the way i think is funny for them the people around me <laughs> number 13 is being obsessed with scheduling and trying to account for everything that could go wrong but still getting frustrated when i fail i think this also goes with trauma of growing up with not being allowed so much to fail but yeah we're changing that number 14 is rcd i've rcd cleaning and organization obsession number 15 is needing quiet nor light and to be soothed when i am experiencing sensory overload i could actually fall asleep or faint as a response to a loud environment or in front of a speaker we all thought it's just because i don't mind the sounds but my therapist explained that my body responds to overwhelm by shutting down my senses and falling asleep <sighs> so now if you have an autistic family member or a friend head plugs are really good for them or being isolated to a dark room for a bit to recover if they don't like the sensation of having something in their ears i personally like it when i'm being held or hugged and my ears eyes and nose are covered during those moments so usually it's doing this or just doing this yeah so that's the last one and that's quite a long list but <laughs> i just want to remind you that if you've met one autistic person you've met one autistic person we're not all the same we're not all stereotypically aloof so even if i have collected a list of observations uh, my family and friends have made about me being on the spectrum we could have similarities and differences with other autistic people and still have it be valid the key is acceptance uh consideration and kindness i guess i think um awareness matters but saying super romantic things like about a disorder is really just not helpful in my experience because it's an opinion and that just confuses people who are people like us who are on this spectrum and if you don't agree and it's how you cope with it that's fine um, but please be careful with sharing that belief to others because it's still an opinion. Anyway, this is just part of my day in the life of Epiphanies. Epif uh, Epiphanies video in a video diary. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna. Thank you for being here. I appreciate the support and the love I've received since started my vlogs i i love you so much and i appreciate you um please also feel free to begin conversations with me on in the comments below if you're on the same boat as i am in this journey so yeah thank you very much i'll end it now